Hello, I'm going to talk a little bit about the excited state and the ground state of an atom. And hopefully you understand that an excited state is that instead of the electrons being down close to the nucleus, they absorb energy, they jump up and they come up here and they can't stay happy and excited forever. So what do they do? They fall back down and when they do that, they're going to release some energy. So we're going to talk a lot about that and hopefully you'll understand why um, why metals all have the color silver gray, right? What, what gives them that color? And we'll, we'll learn that and many other things. Here we go. So we know that electrons can be allowed at only certain energy levels, right? So this might represent, well, if I put two electrons down here, 1s2, 2s1. So I've got this, this single electron, and that's the only one I'm really going to talk about right now, in its ground state, as close to the ground as it can. And it's in the second energy level, the second rung of this ladder. Now, there's no way that electron is going to just levitate halfway between the first and the second. It's only allowed in certain places. And that we got from Max Planck, this whole idea of quantitization and electrons are only allowed in certain energy levels. All right? All right. So here we have, we have an electron maybe that started up here on the excited state. It, let's talk about its hydrogen. Okay? So hydrogen has just one electron. So normally it's down here 1s1. But I could have excited it and caused it to jump up to this second energy level. All right? But I have to add energy to make that happen. Now, once I stop adding energy, then that electron falls back down. And as it falls down, it releases light. In this case, a photon of red light. Now, in the second case, we have an atom of hydrogen. And it's been excited all the way up to here. And as it falls down from that second energy level past the first, or third energy level, past the second, all the way down to the first, it's going to give off a different wavelength of light. It might be blue. Now, I would have preferred this diagram had this been a longer wavelength here and a shorter wavelength here, indicating a higher frequency, higher energy light is blue than of red. But I didn't make the slide, so that's what it means. Now, we're looking here at an atom where the electron has fallen from four different spots. It's fallen from 2 down to 1, from 3 to 2, from 4 to 1, and from 5 to 2. Different energy levels, right? Now, we can probably figure out that between A, B, C, and D, which of those is the most amount of energy and maybe the least amount of energy, right? So I want you to think about which one is releasing the most energy and then put them from most to least energy. Go ahead and pause right now if you need to. All right. I hope you've concluded that a drop from way up here from C all the way down the first is the most energy released. Now the second most energy you maybe thought was here, but you're wrong. It's actually A. This one going down, anything going down to the first is more energy than anything to the second. So the most energy drop is C, then A, then D, and then finally B is the smallest amount of energy change. So we're looking at here. Here is an atom of lithium. It has an excited electron up here. It's just buzzing with electricity, cursing through its little body there, right? And it can't stay excited forever. So what does it do? Well, it falls from that excited state to the ground state. Let's make that happen one more time. For some reason, that animation's not working on there. That's all right. We'll let it do its thing. There it goes. And then it slides down. And as it goes from the excited state down to the ground state, it releases a photon of red light. Okay. Now, this happens in the dark just as well. It's not a light phenomenon. The light is being given off from the atom as it drops back to the ground state. Here's the way another author um, signifies that. We're looking at a bunch of atoms of this hydrogen atom. These are hydrogen atoms, these little blue circles, blue-green circles. And it's going to absorb light. These atoms are going to be struck by light. Now, it's not enough light energy to cause ionization, just enough to get it excited. So notice that a few of these atoms, these three with the little red tails attached to them, are now excited, right? 
Now, they can't stay excited forever, so what do they do? They kick off photons, and then as they remove that energy in the form of photons, they go back to the ground state. And that's the idea of an excited state and a ground state atom. Now, this one I like a little bit more. Look at what's going on. We've got energy levels. The nucleus of the atom represents right where the mouse is now. So here's the first energy level, the second energy level, the third energy level. And we're just looking at individual electrons. So if an electron was moving from the third energy down to the second, there's a certain amount of energy. From the second to the first is another type of energy. And from the third to the first is yet another one. Now, based on if we just use colors of the rainbow, like red, green, and blue, blue has the highest frequency and is the most energy. So anything going down to the first energy level is the most. So we know that the least is going to be the one going from 3 to 2. That would be red. And then somewhere in between, 2 to 1 would be green. So we would actually see different colors. Notice that the wavelengths get a little bit shorter as we go from red to green to blue as well. Right? Shorter frequency is a higher energy wavelength. All right, let's bring this back to the Bohr model of the atom in terms of atomic spectrum and what does the colors actually tell us. Now, we commented earlier, if you take white light and pass it through a prism, you can get a rainbow of colors. And that's very interesting, I suppose. Right? But we can also realize that sometimes if you pass it here, by heating a gas with electricity, we can get it to give off colors as well. So we're heating up gas and then passing it through a prism and then we get colors. Now we don't get all the same colors as we did before. right? We get this color, this magenta, separates out into reds and blues and purples maybe. right? But we're missing the yellows and greens in there. And that's because this sample is not, um, well every sample is unique. Let's leave it at that. All right. So let's look here. Each element gives us its own characteristic colors just like you and I have unique fingerprints and unique personalities. And we can use those characteristic colors that are emitted when you heat a gas up and pass it through a prism to identify that particular type of atom. That's how we know what stars are made of. We don't actually go to the stars and sample them. We look at the light that comes off of them, pass it through a prism, and we say, oh, that's got 92% hydrogen, 3% helium, and and then we can figure out based on the colors of light that come off of it. So as I said, we all have unique fingerprints. Well, atoms all have what are called unique line spectra. Now, you get a line spectra because you passed a gas through a narrow slit, through a prism, and you get these little lines. And they're unique for each element. If instead we pass that gas through, a, instead of a slit in a line shape, through a shape of a bear, it would look like a bunch of colored gummy bears up here, like a Grateful Dead poster or something. These line spectra, again, are unique to each and every element. They're called emission spectra. They're when you excite the atom, the electrons jump to a higher state, and as they fall down, they emit light, and that's what you're seeing in these emission spectra. The light is the emitted, given off energy. So, if we look at if we take a, a, an atom in a ground state and give it energy, somehow excite it, we can do that, right? A photon is then going to be kicked off when it drops back down to the ground state. So here we have what's called a, well, it's a spectrum tube, and it's been excited, so it glows, the gas inside glows. We pass it through a slit, through a prism, and it separates out into individual colors. This happens to be an atom of hydrogen. And I know that because of its unique one, two, three, four colors and where those wavelengths are. I know that's hydrogen. The electrons we know exist in those orbits with defined amounts of energy and their energy levels. Therefore, when you excite them and they fall back down, we are going to get a defined specific amount of energy released. They can only gain or lose very specific amounts of energy. And then because of that, when they fall back down, only specific photons or colors of energy or bundles of energy of light 
will fall down with very defined frequencies. So here's hydrogen and um, what happens is if the electrons are excited and they fall all the way down to the first energy level, we can't actually see that light with the negative eye. That would be what's called ultraviolet and it's in what's called the Lyman series. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. If though it's excited up to a higher level and falls to the second energy level, that resides in the Balmer series. So it can go from the sixth to the second, that would be this purple line. It can go to the fifth to the second, that would be this blue line. It can go the fourth to the second, that would be this green line. The third to the second, that would be the red line. That's what we see. That's why we see those specific lines for hydrogen. So again, the visible light is when it falls for hydrogen to the second energy level. So 3 to 2 is red, 4 to 2 is green, 5 to 2 is blue, 6 to 2 is purple, and those are the spectrum that you see. If we were in class, I'd let you look through a spectrum and you'd see those actual lines appear. Each element then has its own unique fingerprint. So this is helium. Notice that's more than just four lines, right? And the problem is Bohr's calculations on this, they only work for hydrogen. So he kind of worked backwards to make it work for hydrogen. But we do see the spectrum for all elements. So again, what you're looking at, if you just heat up a gas, you can get all these colors of the rainbow. And then what we're doing is seeing which ones are emitted off to get just those spectrum that come from their emission coming off, just those very specific lines. So again, I'm going to say this about the 19th time it seems like. Here's an electron in the ground state. It absorbs a photon of energy. When it absorbs, it jumps from the ground state up to this higher energy orbit, this excited state. And it can't stay there forever. So what does it do? It falls down. When it falls down, it releases light. So what I see is the top ones, this red, the blue, the purple, those are the bands that I'm seeing. Right? This is what it would have looked like. Um, so there's a, 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 an absorption and a transmittance. And generally we just look at the line spectrum that's uh, being emitted. All right, uh, and again, this is the same slide over and over again. It simply says, look, you heat up an object, it glows. If you pass that light through a specific gas, an element, and then through a prism, you're going to get its absorption spectrum. So this is what you, it's absorbing in all these wavelengths, and then it's emitting in these wavelengths. And again, it's the emission spectra that you will see always written down in textbooks. I mentioned briefly, I, I'm not sure that I'll ask you, I'll have to decide on that, but um, if light falls from a far energy out all the way to the first energy level for hydrogen, that's called the Lyman series, it's ultraviolet. The way I tell students to remember it is you can't see ultraviolet light. So if you say with a weird accent, you're lying, man, it sounds like you said you're lying, man, which means you can't see it, but it's there. Right? Your skin knows if ultraviolet radiation hits it because you'll probably get a sunburn or a nice suntan. The Balmer series is visible light. That's from excited states falling down to the second level, and that's where we get the beautiful colors of the rainbow. I always imagine myself on a balmy tropical island like Mole Island, and I look up at the blue sky, I see the green palm trees and my burnt red skin, right? And then, of course, the Passion series. This is infrared. Another name for infrared is heat. So this is excited state electrons falling to the third energy for hydrogen. Now I have a rather sad way to remember this. I think of two lovers making passionate love to each other and they're all hot and sweaty. And the key is passion refers to infrared or heat. Again, you're not going to be able to see that, but it is a form of energy. It's less energy than visible light. There are other series. We mentioned the Lyman dropping down to the first energy level, the Balmer to the second, and then the Passion to the third. There's one called the Bracket and Fun series. I'm not asking you about those. They have different wavelengths of light as well. So we already mentioned that ionization would be taking this electron uh, in the ground state and blowing it completely off that atom. That would be ionization. If, though, it only goes to an excited state and falls down, 
Again, all of these are falling to the first energy level, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 2 to 1. These are all Lyman, ultraviolet. Passion is up here. Excited states falling down to the third energy level. And Balmer is anything that falls to the second energy level. So 3 down to 2 is the red line. 4 down to 2 is the green line. And it's at a very specific 486 nanometers. Then we have this one here, blue. And then we have, uh, a, I'll call that one purple. And then we go up into the ultraviolet region beyond that. All right. All right. Let's see. Hopefully you're getting the idea of what uh, it means to be excited and how we can uh, identify a, an element based on its emission spectra unique for each element. Uh, again, there's a continuous line spectra for hydrogen. Here's what it would look like in terms of its emission. Not sure where there it goes. So there's hydrogen. There's sodium. What it's going to look like. See, it's a little bit different, isn't it? And then here we have calcium. And then we have mercury. So every element is going to give a unique spectra. That's the key. Because they're all starting with a unique electron configuration. So when they get excited and fall back down to that unique spectrum, they're going to be slightly different each time. All right. Sometimes we can even see those differences if we simply, uh, even if you don't go through a prism, here's burning methane gas. And then here is a wooden splint burning. For some reason, my mouse isn't working. There we go. That's just a piece of wood burning. Now, if you soak the wood in different elements, different salts, right? Here I've soaked this in table salt. And so I've got the sodium ion gives a yellow color. Here I've soaked it in copper, and it gives a green color. Maybe you throw in a penny in a fire, and you get a green fire. Here is strontium. It gives a red color. And here, of course, is calcium. It gives you this orange color. So. Again, what you're seeing is the electrons are getting excited in the metal atoms, and as they fall back down, they release energy, and we see them as different visible colors. Now, here's maybe what we see for the naked eye. Here's what we see with the spectrum of each of these different elements. You can see it's a little bit more complex once you break it down into its emission spectra. Uh, I'm not going to go into a bunch of flame tests with you. I would mention, of course, that fireworks are a nice application of seeing electrons being excited. I usually don't, you know, start talking to my friends about, ooh, those are emission spectra you're seeing, or those are excited state electrons falling back to the ground state. But that's what you're seeing. Different colors um, come from the different elements that are in there. I've identified some of the colors. Iron filings are these ones that look kind of little yellow streaks, right? And then the, the, the lithium is the bright red. The barium and copper are greens and blues you can see and so on. Um, again, if you want to get into making your own fireworks, you better be careful. It is illegal, I believe, for you to be doing that, um, to be trying that at home. Um, we're not going to worry about how you make gunpowder or anything else. Um, now, this is key. When you move from a lower level to a higher level, energy is absorbed. Energy was absorbed to go from the second to the third. And more energy is required to go from the first to the third than from the first to the second or second to the third. When you fall down, energy is released. I don't like the term lost. I like released a little bit better. Right? Which one's releasing more energy? Well, this one going from three down to one is releasing more energy than three to two. All right, and finally, let's just deal with the electromagnetic spectrum. We mentioned it before. It goes from very long wavelengths like gravitational waves and radio waves and television waves and microwaves. And then we get into infrared heat. And then we get this little narrow band we can see. We call that visible light. That's Roy G. Biv. Then we get a little bit shorter than visible light, and we get ultraviolet and then x-rays and gamma rays. So it goes from very long wavelengths to very short wavelengths. And so if I'm looking at the, the visible light, Roy G. Biv would fit right in this little box right here and the way I've shown it. Right? The way I remember it, infrared is next to the red, 
and ultraviolet is next to the violet. That helps me keep it straight in my mind. Finally, we can add a couple little more details on here, I suppose. I'm not sure why it's not clicking. It didn't, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, I will leave it here. We're at about 20 minutes. That's not a bad little video for you to watch. Um, thanks for sticking with me. If you have questions, as always, ask in class. Thanks. Bye-bye.